Hey everybody and welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna walk through the basics of how to make your own software products that will integrate seamlessly with your business. Now the focus today is going to be on Microsoft-based products or services, specifically Power Apps and Power Pages. Now the reason I'm covering both of these is they are low-code environments. The majority of what you can actually do will not require coding at all, and you can find plenty of information online for the bits that may require a little bit of a, a technical expertise. but these will actually integrate seamlessly with your Microsoft ecosystem. So for example, when you're creating apps, you have the ability to connect with Dataverse, SharePoint, Excel, and many other Microsoft-based platforms or services. But you also have the ability to do more like building things like chat bots and websites, things of that nature. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna jump in and just go through the high-level basics of both of these platforms. I have much more detailed overviews and tutorials, which I'll link to in the description, but the general ideas if you're looking to make software products and you're looking to make them based off of your current data sources these are great ways to get started now the first thing you're going to need to make sure that you do is have an active subscription to be able to use these services and then also check your access to the various data resources that you are using now, once you've done that, you can access Power Apps or Power Pages from your Microsoft account. Typically, if you're in your 365 account, you'll have some kind of, um, there'll be an app launcher or maybe a settings menu that you can access these from. Now, you can add Power Automate if you wanna add a little bit of automation in the background, but for today, we're just gonna cover the basics of actually building these applications and sharing them. So. If you go in Power Apps, you have a couple of different options for building different applications. So you can start from a blank app or from a specific data source. But another thing you can do is you can actually choose from the pre-built templates. Now I've used the budget tracker in the past, so I will just go ahead and click create here just to show you how quick and easy this setup really is. Now, the initial setup is the part that takes the longest, and it's not usually very long. But while this is going, we'll jump over to Power Pages and <clears throat> essentially do the same thing. So we can click Start with the Template. And the general idea is it'll do the basic setup. And while this is going, you can feel free to pull up any tutorials, things of that nature. But basically, just like with the previous page, there are a couple of templates though I think Power Apps has a much more robust set, but you could just click choose this template. Now you can choose the site name here, and then you'll see we have the web address. Now the domain here is going to essentially be tied to this powerappsportals.com. So you can set that up and configure this as you see fit. But basically we could just call it app123. And you'll see that we get the little checking notification or uh, spinning wheel just to make sure that that domain is available or subdomain, I guess I should say. And then we can just click done and then it will begin setting up that site. While this is happening, we'll jump back here because Power Apps is now ready. So general idea for building your software product, regardless of what it is, when it comes to low code and no code builders, typically the main ideas will have a tree over here with all of our content, our actual application in the middle, and then properties on the right hand side. Different builders do things in a different way, but the most important thing you need to know is where the preview and save buttons are, along with publishing. So if we were to click preview app, if we click this, you'll see that we actually have this tracker here. If we wanted to add an expense, we can click add, we can fill this out. You can actually put in whatever you want. So we'll just put in a random number and click save. And then you'll see that you have the ability to actually work with really everything here within this page. And you'll see our newly added item here. So the tracker itself, if you wanted to, you could actually delete content and basically just publish this as you want. So for example, you can click save first just to get that initial draft saved. 
And then at that point, you will see as we're logging in that we do have data available here. So we can connect and I have other videos that cover this in more detail. But the general idea is we actually have a functional budget tracker. The main thing to note is without that data source set up, you're going to be a bit limited to the ability to actually save and access that data after the fact. For example, if we click on this plus sign here, you can see that we have the ability up here to choose what's actually happening when that button is clicked. For example, on select is going to open up this form and it's going to open up this page. So you'll see that we have form new budget. So you can click through to learn more about what does that form actually do. And you'll see we have form new budget here. So you can click and see what data source is this tied to? Should we make sure that it saves in a different area? How do we actually want this to function? Once you've set that up, and again, I have other videos on doing that, you have the ability to click publish. Once you do that, you can click publish this version. Publishing is what makes this available to other individuals in your organization. You will need to set up that relevant access, but you can adjust the other settings and background colors and things of that nature here. Another thing that I really love that I think is probably underutilized in Power Apps is you can click this drop down and save as or download a copy, which means that you can actually iterate on this. So if you decide you want to make some major changes, but you want to be able to revert, then you can do this to essentially keep a separate version. Now, once you've done this, you have a couple of different choices for how you distribute. So you'll make sure that you have all of this background color setting set up, and then you can go to this share option. When you do this, you'll have the ability to manage your access and copy the link so that you can then share this with other individuals within your organization. All right, so we have opened up the budget tracker and you'll see that basically this is the URL. It's not the most attractive, but we can use this. You have the ability to download it as new versions are released. You'll get a little notification up here that a new version is available and you can refresh, but you can see all of the content here. So for example, as we scroll through, if we decided we don't need this to save anywhere specifically and we're fine with losing data because we haven't connected to a specific data source, then we'll see that we can do exactly what we just did in a prior screen. So we can add in a option here and you'll see everything is updated as far as budgets and you'll see our new item shows up here. If you want, because again, if we're just using this in real time and we won't need anything after the fact, we can make these changes here and click delete on all of these options, except the one that we've just added. And you'll see that all of the amounts will change. So everything is actually working here and it's more of a static application. Once you update all of the data on the back end, then you'll be able to adjust and essentially have more of that app with dynamic data. That way it syncs to people across the organization. But as you can see in just a few minutes, we have this application built and running without any major issues. Now what we're going to do is I will go ahead and close this and then we're going to go to power pages. Now the reason I'm highlighting this is some people want web pages or web apps instead of the actual power apps platform for a variety of reasons. But since we already have this template, you'll see that we can actually select it and you'll see that it's getting site ready. That can take a little bit of time. Now I already have another website that I've built in a previous video. And again, you can check links in the description for that. But what we'll do is we'll pull this up. And part of the reason I'm covering both of these in the same video is because you can actually use the same data sources because again, they're integrating with that Microsoft platform. So if you're pulling in your data instead of the previous app where I was pulling from Excel, if you're pulling in your data from something like SharePoint, then the SharePoint list will sync between everything depending on how you have your app set up. So an example here is we have this screen right here for people to sign up for the application. If you want, you can click add a page. You can choose the type of page. And as you select whatever page type you want, you can make sure that you've named it. So we'll just put hi and add. Now, the cool thing about this is because it's low code, or I would say that this is pretty much 
as close to no code as it gets when it comes to power pages because you'll see that we have so many things that have already updated so if we click preview you have the option to preview as a desktop size or mobile now when we open the site you'll see we have the url the portion that we used when we signed up and then the power apps portals and then the high is just the new page that we've added it can take a moment sometimes to actually load but the general idea is now it's pulled up and we have everything listed we have our main navigation we have our home page and you can actually select to edit the site header and really everything on the website so whether it is this new page which we now have here you'll see that these are obviously just sample items and content but we have the page we literally just created and then we have home so we can adjust everything here but i'll go ahead and close that so i don't need to load the new page but the point is we have logged in and accessed a template so we can go to our home page you can simply select the text make any change that you want and publish it you also have the ability to do things like link format uh, you just have a ton of additional functionality that you can work with you can edit things like the site header and i have again another video which i'll put in the description which has more of an overview on how to actually work with power pages but the general idea is just like in power apps how there was a data section a very similar section exists in power pages so you can scroll through and see all of these different options if you are interested in getting that set up so everything that you need pretty much is going to be accessible right here and you can create additional tables you can add in different sources there's just a ton of different options for building in new connections that way you can make sure that you're connected to the same resource so a sharepoint list for example with your inventory and it can be updated as users are accessing the app so you have tons of different options building out something like maybe a project management software tool so the general idea is you have a very similar interface on both we have our tree on the left our app on the center you can edit the code here you have the ability to view additional properties as needed when you select different items and even add forms with the capture recognition as well now i know that this wasn't as thorough but the general idea is again you can build out custom flows and all of these different things if you're interested and then seamlessly integrate between power apps power pages and other microsoft products so i hope this was helpful if you have any questions drop them in the comment box below and i'll see you all in the next video